Howdy friends, Brian Flesig, a matter of route fitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and it's Q&A time. I think we're up to about Q&A number 800 and, uh, no, what, number six? Okay, number six or so. Just seems like a lot. A lot of questions, which we appreciate, friends. Just kidding. We love your questions. Keep them coming. Send them to admin at matteroveroutfitters.com. Make sure to include your name and address, and we'll get you out the hat and the fly box on us if we answer your question here on the YouTube channel. So, I'm going to jump right in today, and forgive me, I had to uh, borrow these from the shop, so uh, I left mine at home. Uh, let's see, Aiden from, well, Aiden, Aiden, you forgot to tell us where you're from and no address. So, Aiden, uh, I'm going to answer your question, and if you want a fly box and a hat, you're going to have to send us an email uh, after you see this. So, Aiden says, uh, looks like he had sent a bunch of questions, and Ryan had responded via email, which, by the way, if... If it sounds like you need immediate help and can't wait till we get to one of these videos, uh, a lot of times we'll respond. If we don't respond, uh, we've put it in the hopper there and we'll try to get to it as soon as possible. So um, Aiden says, thanks for your help, Ryan. Um, uh, looking into that. On another note, would you guys have a video on syncing leaders and their applications? There is very little info I can dig up on them other than an article on Airflow, which is the poly leader I use. Thanks again. Um, sinking leaders. Sure, Aiden. Um, we sell them. Uh, we sell both the Airflow and the Rio brand. And um, for those of you that don't know, a sinking leader, uh, Rio calls these the trout versi leaders although they can be used for any kind of fish. I think it's pretty stupid to call them trout versi leaders. But they're basically um, butt sections of a leader. That's the best way to think of it. It's the tapered portion of your leader. And of course, um, just like a sinking fly line, it's been impregnated with tungsten to, to help it to sink. And then it's gonna taper down. And then you've got a little tag end here that is appropriately sized uh, so you don't get a hinge off of here, okay? That's very important. You don't wanna take a thick uh, butt section like this and tie on a thin piece of tippet because you're gonna get a hinge and it's really gonna mess up your casting. Okay, we'll talk about that more in just a second. But a sinking leader, this particular one is, I believe, five foot long or this one is seven foot long. And then you can add basically two foot of tippet or so, and that's going to make make this approximately a nine foot leader. It also has a loop on the end here, so you can easily loop this on, line through leader, leader through line, loop it onto the tip of your fly line, and that makes um, that makes it really easy. So your question about the application, I'm going to be real honest with you, I don't have much application for this. Um, first of all, when uh, obviously when I'm dry fly fishing, duh. Uh, when I'm nymph fishing, I'm always using uh, either a drop shot rig with an indicator. Uh, I might be tight lining or um, I might be Euro nymphing sometimes. And um, there I'm just using straight up monofilament leaders. Absolutely no need for one of these. Uh, usually 90 8% of the time when I'm fishing streamers, whether it's for um, trout, for smallmouth, for largemouth, for pike or musky, when I'm fishing streamers, I'm fishing a full-blown sink tip fly line. Um, usually somewhere in the ballpark at 10 to 18 foot. When we go out west every summer to visit Kelly Gallup and fish in the Madison or the Big Rivers, I'm fishing Kelly style lines, maybe 30 to 50 foot sinking tips. So really the only use that I have personally for a sinking leader like this is if I was going to fish a small little streamer like a, a woolly bugger or an unweighted muddler minnow or let's say a, a black nosed dace or just any of your smaller more traditional non-Kelly Gallup style streamers uh, I might 
utilize this sinking leader. Um, you know, we also used to call these a poor man's sink tip because you can loop it on to the tip of your fly line, kind of turn your floating fly line into a sink tip fly line, although on a micro scale. And then again, you're just going to attach a short piece of tippet. Now, what I would typically do is um, I would probably tie a perfection loop here in this. And that way you can tie a perfection loop in your tippet and just loop to loop the tippet on. That way you're not cutting into, on a regular basis, this connector piece. This connector piece, I believe, is somewhere around 12 or 13 thousandths. And then you should be able to just uh, loop on uh, a foot and a half or so, a two foot. Let's put that back there. Foot and a half or two foot of let's say 0x, 1x, or 2x. Very rarely, if ever, am I gonna fish a streamer on anything thinner than 2x. In fact, I pretty much fish streamers on 0x or 11 thousandths tippet at all times. So that's really my only use for a sinking leader is if you're fishing small streamers. It has no business chucking around a big articulated streamer uh, like a gallop style. Um, and of course it doesn't belong in nymph or uh, dry fly fishing. So Aiden, there you go. Sinking leaders, uh, the Rio Trout Versa leaders. Check them out at madriveroutfitters.com. And uh, also send me your address and we'll get you out that hat and the fly box, okay? Next up. We have Matthew N. from Glenwood, Minnesota. And Matthew says, first of all, love your channel, love your content. Thank you, Matthew. We appreciate that. I've been fly fishing for about 12 years now, mostly for trout and panfish with a five weight setup. Logical. Well, long story short, my inexpensive fly reel will need replacing at some point in time. I do want to start fishing steelheads and I realize that I will have to go step up to a seven weight setup. I also understand that some fly reels now come with two or more spools. Not, not many of them come with two or more spools. If they, if they come with spools, be suspicious. Here's my question. Is it possible to get a five weight reel and use the extra spool for a seven weight line or vice versa? a seven weight reel and use the extra spool for a five weight line. So I would have a five weight rod, a seven weight rod, one reel with two spools, a five weight and a seven weight line. Let me go back. So you would have a five weight rod, we got that. A seven weight rod, which you're gonna add to your arsenal for steelhead. And you wanna only have one reel with two spools. Can this be done or should one absolutely avoid doing this? Well, of course it can be done. Um, you know, here at Mad River Outfitters, we almost never say never, unless it's a completely stupid question, which this isn't. Um, of course, yeah, you can do that. You can have one reel and have two spools. And I got a couple examples here. I mean, with today's modern reels, and even something like this is the Sage Spectrum C, which is an absolutely fantastic fly reel for the money. These things are so light that it really doesn't matter. I mean, this is rated as a five, six weight. So obviously it's gonna work just fine on a five weight. You, you could easily just, in fact, if we spooled it up for you or whoever you have do it, um, they're just gonna put a little less backing on there is all. That's the only thing to worry about. Um, and this reel might be a skosh on the small side for that seven weight, uh, but that's just going to be cosmetics and a little bit of the crank ratio. Really not a big deal. And if you're looking to save a few bucks, absolutely you can do it. Tons of options out there. Here's another great option, a little more expensive than the Nautilus X. And this is the Nautilus XL. And this thing is rated for like a six, seven, eight weight but you could easily, again, in this case, we'd have to put a little more backing on this reel, no big deal, and then easily load a five weight on here. And yeah, it's gonna look a little bit big for your five weight, but no big deal. Who cares what it looks like? You're just gonna have a higher crank ratio. And these Nautilus X's, 
uh, they're like a feather. So it, the weight of this reel is not going to make any difference. Not to mention, for most of us around here, we all feel that the weight of the fly reel, this whole thing about going lighter, 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 is really an incorrect way to think about this. Um, I don't mind having a fairly heavy reel. It helps me keep that fulcrum point a lot more stationary. If you've seen some of the casting stuff I've done, you know that it's important to me to keep that fulcrum point stationary. So absolutely you can do it. Um, give us a call. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's find out exactly what your rods are. Let's figure out exactly what lines you're gonna put on there. And then uh, most of all, let's find out what your budget is. Um, we can find a reel that suits your budgets, the budget that's gonna do both things for you, no problem. So not a dumb question. Uh, I've got your address here up in Glenwood, Minnesota, and we'll get you out that hat in the fly box. And I look forward to hearing from you when you're ready to buy that reel uh, because we'll help you get the right thing, okay? Thanks again, man. Appreciate it. And last but not least for today, Eric P. from Lancaster, California. He says, I'm new to fly fishing, but not to fishing. I'm enjoying your carp series, but would like an update on recommendations for the rod and reel for carp. What weight rod and reel? And then he goes on, Eric goes on to say, thank you for your YouTube videos. Take care. Well, Eric, you're very welcome. Uh, we appreciate you watching. It's really our pleasure to do these, and, and thanks for the overwhelming response again to all of you. Well, Eric, um, I would say that you can just go back and watch that episode on the Carpent video because nothing has changed. The weight of the rods that we use is no different. The uh, reels that we use are no different. Uh, with the, when it comes to the reels, you want a good drag system. You want a drag system that's, of course, like butter. And um, you want a very large arbor because, as we know, that carp can run really far. Other than that, just get the best reel that you can afford. Um, I, don't th I don't believe that you need an expensive reel and f for carp. Um, if you know us, you know that uh, you don't need an expensive reel for really anything outside of maybe saltwater fishing. Different subject. We won't go there today. As far as the rod goes, it really depends on the water that you're fishing. I would say that around here in central Ohio, I'm fishing a lot of shallow, slow moving streams and I fish a nine foot five weight most of the time. When we fish the lakes uh, where the fish can run a little farther and the fish tend to run deeper, I'll go to a six weight. And then I know a lot of folks say that are fishing up on Lake Michigan, the really big water and the really big fish. They're fishing nine foot sevens, maybe even a nine foot eight. So the rods and reels haven't changed, although models have changed and technology has changed. You still need a fly rod that's gonna deliver a nice tight loop with a, a, a lightly weighted fly to get you down to the bottom typically. And then you need a rod that has the butt section that you can fight that carp with. You know, you don't need a technical fly rod, one that's gonna deliver the cast and fight the fish. Okay, get the best rod that you can afford. Again, five weight, six weight, seven weight, it's probably where you're gonna wind up. Um, so nothing's changed. Uh, maybe go back and watch that carpent video again and everything in that video basically stays the same. So thanks for watching Carpin. We appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in here. Um, as of course, always, Eric, feel free to give us a call. If there's anything that we here can do to help you um, get the right equipment for fly fishing for, for carp. Uh, it's one of our great passions here, as you know. So thanks as always for tuning in, friends. Keep those Q&A questions coming. We'll get to them as we can. We appreciate you being here. If you like what we're doing, tell your friends, subscribe, it really helps us out. And most of all, if you really like what we're doing here, go to madriveroutfitters.com, shop around a little bit, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching as always. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.